got our front brake parts in. Uh, once I told you we're waiting on getting here, I'm gonna go ahead and explain something. I just got done paying $750 for a front brakes disc brake system conversion, and they claim it's all in this one box here. Uh, the box doesn't even feel heavy enough to have rotors in there, more or less brake parts. I mean, normally when you buy uh, a brake system, it comes in two boxes because the rotors weigh 60 tons. Now, remember, I paid $750 for this front brake system. Okay, hold on. It might be here. Um, I also noticed that the brackets that I purchased, okay, are right here. So, all right, uh, we'll be bringing those ones back. I guess everything is here. We're going to go ahead and unbox this and see what we got. We got inner and outer bearings. Um, I'm presuming those are the rotors. There's our brackets. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry, these are our calipers. And it looks like our rotors are in here. Uh, these don't look like they're very beefy. And these are from that same company, uh, Latest Rage. We're going to have to look them up online. So I'm thinking this is all made in China shit, too. Let's go ahead and open this up, and we're going to get Gander what we paid $750 for. Now, remember, these are supposed to be the Y5 rotors. Guarantee you they're made in China. I'm going to do some investigation. I want to see where all this bullshit's made, because... This is a small rotor. Okay, I'm sorry. The reason it's a small rotor is because it's aluminum. Okay, no wonder these things were so light. Um, I literally actually forgot that these were billet aluminum. Huh, my bad, I guess. So what we got here, we got uh, two of these things, rotors. And even the cap is billet aluminum. I would say this is race car ready rotor action here. Um, let's see what kind of action we got with our calipers. These actually seem very, very small. Are these our calipers? Yes, they are. And these are actually dual piston calipers. Wow. Looky there, people, just as I thought. I was actually getting excited thinking that these were made in America by this company, but yeah, we were we were wrong on that idea. So these are billet aluminum too, and they're very lightweight. Um, this looks like a four piston job in itself. Two piston, I'm sorry, one on each side. There's a piston here and a piston here. And of course the brake line goes in there. Uh, so that's really nice, I like that. And then of course we already know what these are. These are going to be our brake pads. I asked the guy, I said, what if I need brake pads? He said, do you really think you're going to want a car like that? And I said, what are you talking about? I might. Well, you're going to have to get a hold of a company like us to find them. Yeah, because you definitely ain't going to buy these over in your local, uh, yeah, you got it, auto parts store. So basically what you're looking at on this table right here, um, did they charge me for these? Let me look and see because I'm gonna have to return some of these. Okay, so they actually come with brackets already. These brackets already. So I'm gonna get a refund on a set of these brackets because those are like 35 bucks. I'm actually thinking of getting a refund on these and actually buying rebuild kits for my JMAR stuff. Um, I'm thinking these are made in Taiwan or China just like the rest of the junk and I really, really think that rebuilding the JMAR master cylinders is probably the way to go. So I'm going to probably get a refund. These were 75 bucks each. And uh, I'm thinking if I can find a rebuild kit for the JMAR uh, brake, I'll probably go ahead and return this too, maybe. I don't know. I'll probably go ahead and keep this. I'm going to go ahead and keep this, uh, the no name. This is a no name brand. Because that's what we live in these days, people. This is a throwaway world. We don't care about names anymore. We don't care about brands, okay? All we care about is putting it on 
our car, and then when we're done with it, throw it in the trash. So overall, uh, we got $500 in these brakes, $750 in the front, um, miscellaneous stuff going on here. Uh, these were $75 each, um, and I basically spent a lot of fucking money. On, I'm not even done buying the brake stuff. Uh, so I've also already spent uh, bukus of cash, but the real deal is, is we're on the road to success. We got some stuff that we can use, and it's going to work out nice. And hopefully, everything is going to uh, play into effect of getting this Class Five Baja ran and running and driving, so my friend Pete can go out and have some fun. <laughs> basically going through all the brake system how you doing out there guys uh, you can see we got kind of a mess here on the table I went ahead and took the uh, hydraulic clutch slave cylinder off I believe that's what they're calling this slave cylinder uh, they're calling it the clutch slave kit yeah there you go so we got that off we'll go over that in a little while um, I also got the master cylinders out and I want to show you these and ask what your opinion would be on using this versus the new ones so what we got here this is the JMAR this is a made in America this is an authentic uh, master cylinder exclusively made for extreme Baha uh, billet aluminum no this is cast aluminum this is an 11 16th bore okay now this was for the front brakes which is disc uh, drum brakes and what I was going to thinking on doing is rebuilding these and reusing them. But the problem is I'm going four-wheel disc brake. So I went ahead and bought these master cylinders, and I want to show you one of them. All right. Remember now, this was purchased back in 1990 uh, when stuff was still made in America. Um, this was purchased today which uh, is not made in America. These are actually made in, um, I believe, Taiwan. These are where they're made in Taiwan. So if you look at the new design of the JMAR, once again, this is, uh, this is the design from uh, 1990. Kind of see the difference here. All right. If you look at the new design of the JMAR, they look identically like this. This is identically, 100% authentic, exactly the same. The only difference is it says JMAR on it, and the three quarters actually stamped in the front, because if you look right here, JMAR has theirs coming straight up, and this one here, Taiwan, is coming straight out. Um, so I'm really debating, should I go ahead and use the uh, Made in China one, Made in Taiwan, whatever, Versus the heavy-duty JMAR, where I can actually take these. These cost $70. That's a $70 master cylinder. Um, I can buy a rebuild kit for this for $39, which is $40. And I noticed on the rear brakes of the car, they had a three-quarter bore for the uh, rear disc brakes. And then the clutch had an 11 16 along with the front brakes. Um, another thing is, is I'll have to go ahead and change this out as well uh, to this. And I actually measured it, the length, and it came out to be the same um, from the firewall to here, which came out to be four inches. And then if we measure this, yeah, four inches. So it'll work. It will work. But I'm thinking brand new versus 40 years old. Uh, or whatever, let's see, 90, 
uh, tw so it'd be 30 years old, or Made in America versus Taiwan. So, um, I mean, I don't know, okay? This one has Phillips screws on it. Uh, the Jmar ones have Allen screws. That's another thing I thought was different. But uh, I do kind of like the, the lid on this versus um, the Jmar one where you got to take the whole top off. You can see that right here. And I had to drain all the fluid. This was the fluid that was in the uh, master cylinders before I took them off. I didn't want to get all that everywhere. Even though I'm going to um, make it street legal, doesn't mean I'm going to drive it every day. So we're probably going to go with the new ones since we already got them. And uh, they're all matching three-quarter bore, which is really what we need. And uh, hopefully go that route. Um, another thing I'm doing, I'm rebuilding all the brake lines. Now, I wish I had another one of these. But uh, for me to order that, it would take like a week to get here. And it costs like uh, $4 and then I have to pay another $6 in shipping. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of set it up. This is for our front brake. This is our front brake um, block. Uh, the brake fluid would come in here and then go this way and that way. But I wasn't even thinking. And the way that they had it hooked up before is they took this mechanism here this and then this here was our number three fitting and then it had the brake line right there and then of course I had to order a braided line for our left brakes uh, because they actually have this piece of shit hooked up on it and I don't know how he didn't blow the brakes out um, you can see right here look at that so I don't know how the brakes didn't blow out from him using this pile of shit. And why would you put a rubber one on one side and a braided one on the other side? That is not uh, a good situation, in my opinion. And uh, this is the action that they had on their car, uh, which is slime. Look how greasy and slimy this is. This thing had to have been leaking or something at one point. But uh, here's our upper brake line, which we will probably have to make new. Um, once again, uh, new master cylinders are designed a little bit different. So I'll probably have to make a new brake line for that. But uh, uh, another thing that when I took these brake lines off, they weren't mounted, uh, they weren't secured to anything. They were just kind of in there slopping around and bouncing, which was very unusual on an off-road car that they would do that. So when we put all this back together, we will make sure that this is secured tightly to the body of the car and not bouncing around and floating to uh, possibly break one of our brake lines. I'm thinking about actually making a new brake line fitting or possibly just go break down and go ahead and order a number three. Uh, it's not like I'm gonna have this thing running tomorrow anyway. So I might go ahead and just order a number three fitting and be done with it and do it the right way. But I still want to go ahead and get it all cleaned up and get all the slime and grease off it that I can because I like to do things the right way. And that's just how I am. Um, this will work. I'm not saying that it won't. But um, I don't know. We're just going to have to play it by ear and see what happens. I'm thinking that they found that randomly found this. You know, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and order another brake line. I'm going to get another brake line. Uh, I'm going to go in there and see how much they are. And I'm also going to get another uh, number six to eighth inch pipe adapter. Uh, I just want to do it right. I don't like this here. This is hokey pokey. And it, you know, it just ain't right to me. I'm sorry. Okay, I just got off the phone with uh, Napa in Grand Junction, Colorado, and they claim that they make steel braided lines, um, brake lines, and they also sell the AN number six fitting. So I think I'm gonna, I got to go to Grand Junction anyway to get some uh, tubing for our bug because I'm going to reconfigure some of the crash bar action inside and the roll cage 
so it'll make it more comfortable for me to drive and you're going to see that. So I think I'm going to go up to Grand Junction. I'm going to go ahead and get that so we can eliminate this action here and also this deal here. I just don't like that. It irritates me and I think it's a, a shitty way to do the job. And um, I'm not just talking about this action. I'm also talking about this right here. And for the money that the previous owner actually paid to have this job done, which he told me how much money he has in it. And I don't want to mention that because, let me tell you, you would probably shit your pants to know how much money he has spent on this car to make it what it is. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to eliminate this. I'm going to get a brand new one. I'm not going to order it online. I'm going to go ahead and get that. And then what we'll do is we'll put the AN fitting just like that over here on this side. And then it'll be done professionally. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this action and see what we got. Um, I'm debating whether I ought to go ahead and just get a braided steel line for this, but this actually looks like it's in good condition still. Uh, this is actually a brake line. The thing I don't like about this is that they had this wire tied uh, to the frame or whatever they had. I think it was wire tied to that like that right there or something. And um, I don't like the way that they actually rigged this thing up. Um, I'm thinking that this is probably bad. Uh, it's very hard to push in and another thing is is if you look right here the rubber seal on it uh, you can see where it's rotted um, do I care if it's chrome no I really don't nobody's gonna look at it and this isn't a show car um, so we got the empty one and I'm actually speculating that this is probably made in China as well or somewhere foreign to us because nobody really gives a shit about being made in America anymore. And the thing that irritates me the most, and this is the situation why people bitch and complain. When it's made in America, it's precisely machined, it's, it's, it's flawlessly perfect and works great. But when you get this stuff that's made in China, like this, it's made of cheap, inexpensive materials. Uh, they're made in sweatshops, you might as well say sweatshops. And they're just thrown together and, 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 you know, here you go, this is what you get. When it breaks down in two or three years, buy another one type deal. Uh, whereas, you know, when they made stuff in America, like this Jmar, for instance, okay, Jmar, when they did America, I mean, the thing would last you the rest of your life. You'd never have to buy, all you have to do is just buy a little rebuild kit for 30 bucks and rebuild it. So I'm still thinking about this. I'm still thinking about this and then getting my money back on that. But we don't know about that yet. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our slave cylinder. Um, and the slave cylinder is a complete package kit. It comes with everything. It's a whole package deal. Uh, we're going to see that here in a minute as soon as I get it out of here. It's a nice um, slave cylinder. I like the slave cylinder. Let's get these out. I got limited elbow room here that I'm working with and I don't want to cut my hands open while we're doing that so let me get this okay there's that and then we'll get this and throw it over there in the trash pile so this actually comes with everything um, and when I say everything I'm gonna go ahead and show you you get the option of using the wing nut just like a factory Volkswagen they give you that or you can go like what we're going to do and use a nut with a lock nut on top of it type deal. Or actually, uh, yeah, the lock nut would actually be on the top because this is where uh, the clutch fork arm will ride. This is our slave cylinder um, and it looks like that cable will work on there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get that brake line off of there like this if I can there it is okay so this is actually a brake line from a car um, I'm thinking about possibly going and getting a braided hose for this I mean I might as well I mean what can it be 10 15 bucks I just really don't like this I mean it's just cheesy and it's stupid so all right okay so I'm gonna take some brake fluid and then I'll clean this fitting off because um, we're going to go ahead and reuse that. 
And I want to warn everybody to please, please use brake fluid, uh, brake cleaner fluid with caution. Very important um, because it is dangerous. So we're going to go ahead and take this fitting off. And that fitting's acting kind of hard. That's that's weird. Then what do you expect? Made in China. Make sure you add your Teflon the proper way. Okay, um, then we got to get our bracket on there. So we might as well go ahead and do that while we're at it. Now I don't know exactly where this bracket's going to end up. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And I'm going to check these bolts here. These actually fit better. These made in China ones are loose. So we're going to go ahead and just so we don't lose everything, we're just going to put this on here like that. That'll be our bracket. Yeah, these actually fit better on this thread than those Chinese ones. Huh. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, there you go. Uh, slave cylinder, cylinder is now ready to install. All right, I just got back from Grand Junction and um, went ahead and got a braided steel line that you can see right here for our clutch. And we're going to go ahead and mount our slave cylinder into the vehicle. So let me get it ready here. And you can kind of basically see where it goes right there. And the way this thing goes in here is pretty simple. All right, so this goes up in here like this, and then that goes like that, and then this, if I can get all this out of here, uh, this bracket right here um, actually goes like this, and then that goes like that, and then now we can put the nuts and washers back on it. So this is going to go like that. That goes like that. And then this is going to go on here. And this goes like this. I think the uh, braided line that I got is a, might be a little too long. I kind of went ahead and shortened it up some. But that's okay. We can always take the slack out on the metal line. So then this is going to come up here. And I don't even know if you can see what's going on here, but I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted like this. And then, of course, this bracket goes right here like that. Now, once again, I want to go ahead and explain it to you. I don't know if I've mentioned this. I probably have. Um, if this slave cylinder does not fix the hard clutch problem, uh, the next thing that we will have to do is we will have to take the motor out and put a brand new clutch system in it. So the way that we're going to adjust this clutch to work properly is we are going to loosen these screws up right here. We're going to go all the way down with those. And then we can go ahead and screw this in right here. Make sure we get full threaded rod on that, just like that. And then we're able to come back and then we'll do our final adjustment down here on the clutch instead of up here. So if we look in the car right here, here's our rear brake system. We got uh, two brake lights here, which we will be hooking up. Uh, we got the left brake line here, the right brake line on the other side. This is our steering brake that we're not going to use. We went ahead and bought a brand new one. This one's probably still good, but we're going to go ahead and replace it with brand new. This is our proportioning valve. That's a manual proportioning valve to adjust the brakes the way that we want them. Now we will be adding two residual valves. And what a residual valve is, it's this thing right here. Um, this was on the rear disc brake, so we're going to add two of those, one on the rear, one on the front. And then the brake lines actually came from right here, you can see them here, and they came across here like this. And 
before I did all the before these seats were in here there were some race car seats in here and they were kind of just up in the air right here under the race car seat and I eliminated that and what I did is I went ahead and pre-bent uh, the line it comes down here and then goes down here uh, and here's the line right here and then I'll go ahead you can see I've already put uh, a fitting on here where I can actually uh, do what I got to do to hook all this up so it'll be under the seat and then um, the clutch cable uh, we ran down the frame right here uh, here it is right here and I'll be tying that down so it's secure um, and then I'm going to hook up the clutch line back here and then up here I'll go ahead and cut dice and slice this and hook it all back together all right so we got the master cylinders installed into the car uh, we ran into some issues using those and what I'm doing now all these brake lines are single flare every single one of them that I checked the uh, original brake lines are single flare so I'm gonna have to go back on all the brake lines and double check all the hard lines and see what the situation is because maybe back in the 80s uh, our buddy guy we're gonna meet him in a minute he said back in the 80s DOT passed a law is that what you're telling me guy yes Okay, what's going on with that? Go ahead and talk while I'm, I'm double flaring this one. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, and that's what I'm saying, I've heard that back in the 80s, and it could have been, been in the, the late 90s, but... Uh, early, early 90s. Early 90s, yes. There was a problem with the brakes, and, and uh, they decided to double flare because they were splitting the ends on the, on the ring. Right, and, right, right, right. Uh, okay, so you're thinking, by your calculation, can I have my pliers, please, guy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So you're saying by your calculations, you're thinking that the DOT department back in the day uh, went ahead and set regulations that all brake lines had to be double flare. Traffic, yeah, tra yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, traffic department, traffic, however you want to call it. Because uh -huh. you used to be a truck driver. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like you were jack all trades there for a while. Uh, Did a little bit of everything. Jack all trades. Forklift uh, builder. Uh, all kinds. We're going to get some answers there on that in a minute. Let me finish this and then we'll turn our attention toward you. So what I did there is I cut the end off and uh, double flared it to put onto 